all right uh, good afternoon everyone so uh, what we will do uh, starting today is gently uh, talk about the simplex algorithm for linear programming problems so what we did so far uh, at least towards this algorithm is we saw what is the uh, meaning uh, or, or what does it mean when we say that uh, some point is a basic feasible solution to a linear program and and we said that you know basic feasible solutions are nothing but extreme points that essentially gave us a nice algebraic way of, of characterizing extreme points uh, which uh, essentially is, 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 is what's going to uh, be used for uh, you know the purposes of, of um, uh, solving linear programs right because all said and done when you actually solve linear programs you solve equations right so 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 so, so, so that's why you want to uh, uh, some sort of algebraic characterization so we need one more step so i'm going to sort of uh, tell you what this is before you know we can actually introduce the um, uh, algorithm itself so if we have a standard form polyhedron such that a x equal to b x greater than or equal to 0 then you ask the questions are uh, what are the basic feasible solutions of P. So that's the question. Uh, again, you know, at a fundamental level, uh, it is not different from what we did so far because, you know, there's also a system of linear inequalities. So all you have to do is, 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 is translate that here. But in this case, you know, uh, the, uh, because we are, when we talk about simplex algorithm, we deal with only this sort of polyhedra mostly. We, we want to sort of specialize it to, to this case. So, so there is nothing new that we are doing here. Okay. And we are going to assume that, you know, A is a M by N matrix and the rank of the matrix is M. Okay. So, this, this, these are assumptions that we are going to make. Um, and uh, I am going to sort of uh, give a one line justification of why we can make this assumption uh, without loss of generality. Of course, if you assume that the rank of A is N, then you know at max there is one point, right? Because because the, then then because A is an M by N matrix. Now suppose the A the rank of A is less than M. What we can do is we can sort of uh, remove some of the the sort of dependent rows and then you know shrink it down and, and only assume that you know A is full row rank. So that's that's a I mean, provided as long as there is, if the the polyhedron is feasible. If it is, if it doesn't have any feasible solution, then we can't really do this, right? But but if, we, if it's feasible, then you know I can always you know reduce the number of rows by by doing row operations, and and everything holds in a straightforward way. That's one thing, and I also can assume that. So from the I also can assume that my vector b is non-negative. Again, if B has some negative components, I can just multiply throughout by minus 1. They, it, since it is an equation, nothing changes. You have a question? So, if the rank of A is less than M, there can be multiple solutions. If the rank of A is equal to M also, there can be multiple solutions, right? We will we, we, we look at an example, right? So, this is only uh, assuming so that, you know, we, we assume, we, we, we make this assumption so that the, so, what, what we are assuming is that the rows of the matrix A are linearly independent, right? That's, and, and that's without loss of generality because if there is a dependent row, you can sort of factor it out provided the polyhedron has a, is not, is, is not empty, right? So, that's, that's the reason. Okay, we will see an example where even if, you know, uh, A, the rank of A is M, there are multiple solutions, okay? So, that's, that's fine. So we are making this assumption and now you are asking the question what is a basic feasible solution. So I just state the result and maybe prove one direction uh, but not uh, go into the other uh, sort of direction. Now now let us before stating the result let us look at the following. 
So, if we have an inequality constraint, so if we have you know a system where uh, let us say q is a set of some uh, constraints like this and then you ask what is an what is a basic feasible solution we defined it saying that you want n of these n of these linearly independent constraints to hold at equality right that is that is what we said uh, was a basic feasible solution definition does not change. So, here I have a bunch of constraints I want n of them n linearly independent constraints to hold at equality ok. Now, you may ask ok. So, here are m linearly independent constraints that always hold at equality right from this bunch of a x equal to 0. So, where are the remaining ones going to come from? The non negativities right. So, they are also inequality constraints right. So, so, so that is all and, and that gives us extreme points of a uh, this the standard form polynomial right so so we will say that m can be uh, m cannot be greater than n because we are assuming that the rank of a is equal to m right so it's an m by n matrix it can at most be n if it is n it is not interesting because then there can be at most one feasible solution right? so x bar is uh, basic feasible solution for P if uh, well of course I want x bar to lie in P so that is a x bar is p and x bar is p are uh, all greater than or equal to 0 the component and there exist columns we would call it b of 1 is p of m or and use columns, but I will just say indices from the set of variables. So, I, I choose m of these variables uh, such that one is that the columns corresponding to these variables are linearly independent and two x bar j is 0 if j does not belong to any of these things. Right? So, that is the, the definition again it is just a formal way of writing down, but what I just what I said is is exactly what what we uh, talked about in the previous time. So, so if you look at the system right a x equal to b x greater than or equal to 0. Now, if I want m constraint linearly independent constraints to hold at equality I have from here sorry m constraints here. So, I must get n minus m of these of the 
variables must be equal to zero, right? Because setting this non-negativity to equality means that I'm setting that variable to zero, right? So this, that, that's that's the meaning of a basic feasible solution. So that's exactly this, right? So so in the sense, so this is this is just a fancy way of saying that. And now what we'll do is we will just look at an example. So then it will be clear what, what we mean if, if it is not already clear. So let us say, yeah, no, I want, see, so so what, what do we mean when we say that a point is a basic feasible solution? So I want n linearly independent constraints to hold at equality. I get m from these. So I need n minus m more. No, not, not positive. So I want them to hold at equality. This constraint says that xi greater than or equal to 0. At equality means that I want to put push that to equal to 0. Right? That is that's the idea. Okay, is that clear? So, so, so now if you think about it, for those of you who know the simplex algorithm, this, this, this gives you a partition of your variables into basic variables and non-basic variables. So the variables that you, the, the n minus m variables that you set to 0 automatically, they are what we have been calling the non-basic variables and the other variables, some of them might be still 0, but they, they can take positive values, they are what we usually call the basic variables. Right. So, that is exactly what we are doing. So, let us take an example here. So, let us say you know you are uh, so we have seven variables. And here is the following constraint. So, just write down the a matrix Right. So, this is the system. Uh, so, I have seven variables and have uh, this uh, uh, set of constraints. And now, let us try to find some basic feasible solutions for uh, uh, for this, this polyhedron. Right. So, what do you want here? What you want is I want to take now here. And now you can check that the rank of this matrix is 4, right? Why is that? Because there is there's a very nice, you know, identity matrix sitting here. So, so, the, so, so clearly the rank is 4. So you have, so from this you already get 4 linearly independent constraints. Now what you want are 3 more, right? So what you do is, well, you find 4 linearly independent columns right of of this matrix set the other variables equal to 0 and and that's how you're going to get the, the basic uh, feasible solution so here 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 could be some some example so so i'm just going to this is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 and a7 so, of course, you know A4, A5, A6 and A7 are linearly independent, right? So, so 
six a seven are linearly independent. So, what do I do in order to get the basic feasible solution? I just say that x one, x two, x three are zero. So, x one will be zero. We get the solution. Um, well, that's straightforward. Okay, so this is a basic feasible solution. That's good. Let's do a couple more. So let's look at three, five, six, and seven. So three. So again, we can easily see that three, five, six, and seven are linearly independent. We can, we can verify that so they are indeed linearly independent. So, what do you do? You set x1, x2, and x4 to be 0, and you get so x1, x2, and x4 to get 0, 0, and x4 0. So, what will be x3? 3 is going to be x3 is going to be 4. Yeah. And what about x5 then? Ah. Okay, the rest are not important. So, so what happens to this point? This is not feasible, right? So this is not a basic feasible solution. This is a basic solution but it is not feasible. So, so, remember when we said basic solution we, we all we needed was sufficiently many linearly independent constraints to hold that equality, but not necessarily feasible. Right? So, this is this is not feasible ok. So, that is one set Okay, what else? Let's do a couple more. Uh, one more kind of thing that I want to illustrate. So uh, we can do a one, a two, a three, and a seven are. Linearly independent, so I set x three is sorry four x five x six to be equal to zero, and then I get the point. this is a basic feasible solution. So, these are the linearly independent columns right the variables corresponding to the linearly independent columns are called basic variables. So, what are the basic variables? Basic variables are uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 7 right these are basic variables and now notice that one basic variable is 0 right so basic variable is 0. So, so if when whenever you have a basic variable equal to 0 there could be an issue. Now, here is for this particular point you can also verify that I can also get this as basic feasible solution if you know I assume that 
x1, x3, x4 and x7 are basic functions because a1, a3, a4 and a7 are also linear independent. So, so observe what is happening here. So, here uh, a1, a3, a4 and a7 are also So, there are multiple ways of picking linearly independent constraints that hold at equality, right. So, so I, I, I picked a one set of linearly independent vectors, I picked another set of linearly independent vectors. So, I am doing a so geometrically, uh, sorry, algebraically I am I am doing two different things, but they give rise to the same point in the geometry in this case. So, uh, although we know that all extreme points are basic feasible solutions and all basic feasible solutions are extreme, it is not a one to one correspondence. Any basic feasible solution uh, uh, will give you one extreme point, but one extreme point can be given by several sort of set of basic and non-basic solutions. Now, why is this important? Uh, well, I mean people thought that this was important because of a something called degeneracy. This phenomenon is called degeneracy where multiple bases give the same extreme point. The problem is you know you it is possible that when you try to do the simplex algorithm you sort of uh, do not make progress you you get stuck there forever, but uh, there are ways of getting around that. that but it's, it's, there are simple ways of getting around that. So, there are things called lexicographic uh, rule or, or whatever I mean. So, we, we will not get into details of the, that because they are sort of, uh, they can be managed very easily. So, but this this idea is is this this, this thing called degeneracy it is um, it is important ok. So, with that so now that we know what how do basic feasible solutions look like what we will do is we will sort of uh, go on and, and talk about the simplex algorithm. So, so what we will do is we will first see what is happening in the simplex algorithm. So, I will sort of explain geometrically the idea and then we will sort of move on to uh, the algebra or, or, or the, the actual implementation. So, before that uh, I hope everyone is clear about ba basic feasible solutions of uh, polyhedra when you write it in standards. So, let us let us talk about you know uh, how we solve an optimization problem. So, so far we have not talked about how we solve an, solve an optimization problem. So, so you know we will we'll write it for linear program, but 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 let us. So, the main idea so or rather here is an iterative here is an iterative method. Okay, so this is, this is bare bones skeleton, and then we will uh, talk about you know uh, details. So 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 how do you do it? So you first start with a point. Be uh, somewhere in the polyhedron, right? So of course I mean that's 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 what you do, and then what you do is you know, let D be a direction so that it's not plus alpha D is still a feasible point for And so the two requirements D tends to D is less than zero. So I'll 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 I'll, I'll explain each of these steps and then, then we'll see uh, what, what what happens here and then you move on to
okay because we are we are, we are trying for some iterative procedure then you say that well x k plus 1 is um plus plus d and then you So I'm not being very precise here, but we we will we will write down how the algorithm works. So so you're going to start at a point in the polyhedron, and then what you're going to do is you're going to look at a direction along which I can move and still remain in the polyhedron, right? So so x k plus alpha d still belongs to the the polyhedron. So so I can I can move in some some non-zero step I can take and still remain feasible. But I also want the objective value to go down because I want a minimum, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay actually move in that direction uh, for some step uh, length alpha k. And then I'm, I'll say okay I'll I'll I'll, I'll start over again. That's the idea. Uh, so so and if you think about it, you know this is this is the idea of any iterative algorithm. So I'm at a point. Can I move along a direction so that I'm still feasible and my objective value is reducing? If I can do that, then take a step in that direction. That's that's so when when we talk about steepest descent and things like that, it's exactly how 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 it behaves. Okay, but uh, the details are uh, we don't really know. I mean, in the sense, how do we get this initial point p? How do we calculate the direction along which we move so that the objective value also decreases? How do we choose the step length alpha k? Right. That's also an important question. How do we decide when to stop? So suppose if we cannot find a direction along which the function value decreases, are we sure that we are at the optimal solution? Well, in the case of linear programming, yes. In general, no. So, so we have to, there are a lot of details to be decided. So, so this is just a you know a complete skeleton uh, type of 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 algorithm. Now, in the case of linear programming, what helps us is we know that. A, optimal solutions are at basic feasible solution right so what we'll do is we'll start at a basic feasible solution x not and then we only look at directions that take us from one basic feasible solution to another basic feasible solution that is the the, the idea that's a key in in in, in lp uh, is x not we'll start as a basic feasible solution and this direction will uh, take us from one basic feasible solution to okay so that is the 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 sort of uh, philosophy uh, behind uh, the the simplex algorithm okay so now uh, what we so so if we were to look at two dimensional LPs, so what we'll do is we will see how it works. What is proved? I mean, we won't you know completely prove the theorem, but the, the theorem says that if I can find a solution, if you give me an initial basic feasible solution to start with, I can you know run the simplex algorithm in such a way that if it has an optimal solution, the algorithm, the simplex algorithm will find the optimal solution in a finite number of steps. So it's not going to keep on going forever. For some finite number of steps, uh, so given some finite number of steps, it's going to uh, give the optimal solution. So that's that's the uh, the uh, the result. Uh, so what? Before again, before we start uh, going into the simplex algorithm, what I will do is give an example where finite is not good enough. Okay, so finite is not good enough. Even finite may be very large, right? So, so this this all ties in very nicely with 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 what is uh, the the question of is the simplex algorithm a polynomial time algorithm for solving linear programming problems? Um, we don't know the answer. Well, we believe it is not, but but we don't know the answer. And and how do you establish such a thing, or how do you sort of uh, gather evidence for such a thing? So what you can do is you can carefully construct 
examples of linear programs for which the simplex algorithm could take a ridiculously large number of iterations that is that's 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 the idea okay uh, yeah so so this the so the first such example was constructed in the uh, late uh, early 1970s uh, by uh, this guy called Klee and Minty so so this is the what is called the Minty cube. So, here is what they do. So, I uh, will also draw a picture because so here are the axes. Right. So, now what we do is we will take the, the unit the standard unit uh, cube so this is the unit cube and suppose if I you know maximize So, I am just illustrating. So, here n is 3. So, so that is why x and the unit cube. Okay, I am just going to say unit cube uh, and I am going to say that, okay, I will start at the origin. Okay, so let's let's take this trivial linear program. I'm at this point, the origin, and now what I want to do is, is now now let's take the simplex algorithm. Now the simplex algorithm is, I'm at this point. Can I find a direction along which I can move that? I'll go to another basic feasible solution. Yes, right. So I can go from here to this basic feasible solution. I can go from this basic feasible solution, I can go to this basic feasible solution. Now, the question is can I find a basic feasible uh, direction along which the objective value increases? The answer is yes, there is only one such direction, and that one direction is going straight up. Right. So, if I solve this, if I want to solve this problem starting from the origin, you know, whatever be the the the, the other details the simplex algorithm will give give you the optimal solution in one iteration because there is only one direction along which the objective is increasing to. I mean of course you, you, you also want to go only to the one of the basic feasible solutions. You do not want to go anywhere else. So, from the origin the only basic feasible solution that you can reach by increasing the objective value is this case and that is an optimal solution n is 3 here. So, in one iteration you are going to find the optimal solution. Okay. So, what these smart people did is they took this cube and twisted it a little bit and the entire sort of thing uh, changed completely. So, here is what they did. So, you see that epsilon is less than or equal to x 1 less than or equal to 1 and epsilon x g minus 1 less than or equal to x g less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon x g minus 1 for g going to So, these are the constraints. Now, what happens if epsilon is 0? If epsilon is 0, then, then we are just at the unit cube, right? Right. If epsilon is 0, then we just here, the, this, this unit cube is the feasible solution. 
So what you do is you sort of take it and, and sort of twist it. So epsilon is small. So once you do that, the the vertices change, uh, and here's how the new object looks like. So let me try to sort of fit in uh, this here as well. Uh, so you can calculate what are the extreme points. Now, now you know how to calculate extreme points of polyhedra by finding basic feasible solutions. You can do that, but but I'll just give you what 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 the uh, um, uh, what the extreme points are. Here, here. This is how the, the the new object looks like. Let me just write down the coordinates. So this is 0, 0, 1. This, of course, is the origin. This is 0, 1, 1 minus epsilon, 0, 1 epsilon. This guy here is 1, 1 minus epsilon. Epsilon minus squared. This guy here is one one minus epsilon. One minus epsilon plus square. Uh, this guy here is one epsilon epsilon squared. This fellow here is one epsilon and one minus epsilon. Okay, so a lot of epsilons, but that is the uh, the new feasible region. Okay. Now, what do we get out of this? Uh, well, what we get out of this is the following. Now, I'm not going to say this is going to be true always, but here's what you can get. So uh, from the origin, you know, I can I can go up, particularly up directly, and and get to the optimal solution. That is true. But you know, now for this, I know the answer. But but if I don't know the answer, what can you observe? So you can say that okay, from here, my objective is is definitely going up, right? My objective is 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 definitely going up from because from zero. It's it's going to epsilon squared, so I can I can go take so I can go from the origin to here, and then from here, okay, it's going from epsilon square to epsilon minus epsilon square. So I, I can go from here to here, then I can go from here to here, so then I can go from here to here, then from one minus epsilon to one minus epsilon plus epsilon squared. I can come from here. Oh, and then I say okay. Now this is even better. Ah, finally, yes. Origin has. Oh, it must be epsilon comma zero comma. Uh, if it is epsilon, then it works, right? Oh, it will. It will so I have to check. So, so okay. You are saying 
here the smallest is indeed epsilon uh, then so let me just write down the constraints One is greater than or equal to epsilon. Um, X two is between one minus epsilon X one and epsilon X one, and so X two can be epsilon squared, and X three, yeah. So 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 this won't be zero, but this can be. Epsilon, epsilon cube, right? That's fine. So that's still we are we are we are increasing the option. Yeah. Okay. And you know, when you see this pattern, you can see that it's, it's sort of the the same thing can it can work. So what it says is what this example says is the following. Here is an here is a linear program where with n variables right and even if you add slack variables etc the, the number of constraints is going to be some 2n or 3n or not going to go up by much but you know the simplex algorithm in the worst case can take take 2 to the n minus 1 steps to get to the optimal solution so that is this clement example so which which shows that in the worst case it is possible that the simplex algorithm can take exponentially many iterations to converge to an optimal solution. So, so being finite good, but um, not great. So, so that is that is again something that, that seems to need to be kept in mind. Uh, the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that this is something, something theoretical. People have spent time on it uh, and constructed this example just to prove a point that this can happen. Um, however, if you want to solve problems that people do care about, simplex algorithm is, is a fairly fast way of solving uh, linear programs. Uh, okay. Yes. So you are, you are asking, uh, can there at some point can there be can there be two directions that I can I have to choose from to uh, go? Yes, of course. I mean, so so here also there are two directions, right? So one is I can go straight up, or here, or even uh, to the right. So no, see the question is you 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 can't. So it doesn't tell you what direction to take. So, so you might as well choose the, the, the I mean in the sense it you might end up choosing the, the worst direction or even if I give you a recipe. So, 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 so that is that is one question. So, why do not I you know just go up, but then you know what I have to do is I have to define an algorithm right. So, so this is not an algorithm this is just a sort of a skeleton a template. So, in an algorithm I will say okay this is how I am going to choose D this is how I am going to move it. So, if you give me that. Right. If you tell me this is my algorithm, I can construct some variant of this where it is still going to take exponentially many iterations. So, so that game people have been playing since the Clementi example came. So, so, so people have been saying, okay, here is a new way to select which direction along which I am going. So, then some people say, okay, even if you do that, here is a kind of example for which this does not work. So, 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 we still do. But yes, so in general there could be multiple directions to go and if you are asking which one is the best one to pick, we do not know unfortunately. Yes, so okay, you are saying that if the objective function has the same slope as one of the constraints, then there will be multiple of, yes, that is true, that is true even here as well. So, so the nice thing here is what we are doing is we are looking for one optimal solution, optimal solution, right. We are not we do not care if there are multiple uh, or at least for now, I mean when you talk about applications you do care about what optimal solution you want and then there are different modifications, but, but for the time being let us not really care about which optimal solution do you want, let us care about finding one optimal solution, okay. So, that is fine, okay. So, now let us try to formalize this um, simplex algorithm 
by you know uh, uh, saying how we are going to uh, choose uh, or rather i mean let's let's so so this part let's let's sort of write it down formally okay so what we are going to do is we are going to go iteration by iteration right so so we are going to say okay here we have a basic feasible solution now we will see which direction to go in and once you get to the next basic feasible solution you start over okay so let's say we are given a basic feasible solution right so let's say that uh, uh, to our system of equations again remember we we have not really looked at the objective vector at all with, until now so we, we will do that. So, first how do we write it? So, again we saw how to write a basic feasible solution. What we said is we, we take some, uh, so A is again remember M of N, right, where the rank of A is N. So, let us assume that, you know, uh, so, 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 so let us say, uh, you know, if, if I write this A matrix, so it has M rows and then out of which I want to find M linearly independent columns, right. So, that is, that is, that is how I find basic feasible solution. Now, assume, now, now these are just variables. So, I can, I can, I can permute all these variables and I, I can assume that, you know, these m are linearly independent right because there is nothing spectacular I am I'm, I'm just uh, permuting these variables. So, I have a nice square matrix sitting here and I have something else here. These are the other remaining. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to give names to uh, these. So, I am going to call this B and N, right? B for basic, N for non basic. Okay. So, what is B? B is a invertible M by M sub matrix of A. Right? So, B is a Invertible M by N. Okay. So that corresponds to what we call basic variables and non basic variables. Now remember what the basic variables are will change upon what the basic feasible solution we look at. Now this is for one fixed basis. Now, what we are going to do is I am going to rewrite this system of equations as B x B plus n x n is derivative. So, these are what I am going to call my These are and just so that uh, we agree on this, my B is a M by M matrix, your N is uh, M by N minus M matrix, your x b is a m dimensional vector and x n is a n minus m dimensional vector. Okay? So, that is uh, how we are going to partition these variables. So, we have partitioned 
our problem, we have rewritten it in terms of basic variables and non-basic variables, correct? So this is how uh, we sort of rewrite uh, this system and, and we do it this way because we know that the matrix capital B is invertible, right? So, so we can, we can do a lot of calculations when the, uh, when the, yeah, when B is invertible, it's, it's rank is M, right? No, no, no. So, we know the rank of A is M. Oh, so, so we know that there are invertible submatrices in there. So, we are picking one of them. There are multiple invertible submatrices. Yes, yes. It's another way of saying it. So, now, so what will be the basic feasible solution? The corresponding basic feasible solution. So, what do you do? You say that, okay, I am going to let all these non-basic variables be equal to 0, right? That is that's how you, you pick a basic feasible solution. Okay. So, I let my non-basic variables to be equal to 0 and now what happens to the basic variables? So, once you set all of this e to 0, then the basic variables are uniquely determined, right? Because B is an invertible matrix. So, and of course, because it is a basic feasible solution, I want the uh, vector to be greater than or equal to 0. That is, that is the definition of a basic feasible solution, right? This is how basic feasible solutions or at least look like when we, you know, partition uh, our variables in terms of uh, basic variables and non-basic variables, okay. Any questions on this? So, this is just, just bookkeeping, right? So, we have, we, this is nothing but bookkeeping. We are just saying, okay, we are giving a different name to the basic variables, we are giving a diff different name to the non-basic variables and then, you know, we say that, okay, this is, this is how it is going to work, okay. So, that is, how are we going to keep track of uh, basic uh, variables versus uh, non-basic variables? And now we can uh, talk about the following. So we are at a basic feasible solution here. We want to move to a different basic feasible solution, right? Okay. So what we want to do is we don't want to move in any improving direction. We want to move in a in a basic direction. So, so what, what does that mean? It means that I want to pick one non-basic variable, right? So, I want to pick one non-basic variable and increase its objectivity. All other non-basic variables I want to be maintained as 0, okay? So, if you draw a picture, this is what you would look at. Now, so imagine that this, this plane represents the set of all solutions to A x equal to B, right? This plane represents solutions to A x equal to B. Then we have a bunch of non-negativity conditions, right? So, these are non-negativity conditions. This is the constraint x1 greater than or equal to 0, x2 greater than or equal to 0, x3 greater than or equal to 0, and x4 greater than or equal to 0. Right? So, these are my constraints. And let us say that we are at this basic feasible. So, let us say we have decided that, so, so the current basic feasible solution x1 and x2 both are equal to 0, right? So, those are my non, those are non-basic variables, they are, they are equal to 0. Now, what I want is the following, I, I have somehow determined that if I increase the value of x1, my objective is getting better. So, what I do is, 
I do not want to increase the value of x2, I only want to increase the value of x1. So, what I will do then is I will move along this direction. Because again, I only want to increase the value of x1 while keeping x2 the same. And now notice that uh, while I move along this green, uh, this blue direction, uh, the values of x4 and x3 will change, right? The value of the basic variables will change. There is no way that you know everything can remain constant. The values of those basic variables are going to change. I am increasing x1, x2 is, own, is, 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 is not changing, x2 is remaining constant. And now look at what, what I can do. How, how long can I go in this direction increasing the value of x1? How long? Until I hit this point when I am going to go out of the polygon. So I, I, I come here. So this is my new basic physical position. So in the new basic physical position, what happens is x1 is positive, x2 is still 0, but x3 has also become 0 now. So, the number of basic variables is still the same, number of non-basic variables is still the same, right. So, this is what we want to capture in, 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 in algebraic notation. This exact idea is what we want to capture in algebraic notation, okay. So, here is what we are going to do. So, we will say that this direction is a basic direction at your basic feasible solution x b comma x n if one is I can move along that direction and maintain feasibility for some distance. So, if you check that then what you what you really want is I want a d to be equal to 0, right? Because I want x plus alpha d to be feasible, a x is already b. So, if a x plus alpha d also must be equal to b, then a d must be 0. So, that is so that is, is, is necessary, okay. And j is 1 for exactly 1 non-basic variable and p j is 0 all other non basic variables. So, what do we mean? We mean that I want to take one non basic variable and increase it. I do not want to increase several non basic variables simultaneously. Uh, I am not that smart. I only want one non basic variable to increase at that time while maintaining all other non basic variables equal to 0. So, so think of this here. I only want to increase x1. So, here uh, x1 and x2 are non basic. I want to increase x1, but not any other non basic variable. So, so I am maintaining x2 to be equal to 0 while increasing x1. That is that's so that is why you know dj is 1 for exactly one non basic variable and 0 for this. Again, note we have not saying anything about basic variables because that is not under our control. Because once you decide to play around, so so imagine you know we we, we are we are trying to solve the system. The moment you fix the the non basic variables here, the basic variables have 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 no other option, they have to sort of go along with it, right. So, so, because because b is invertible, so there is there is no other option. 
that is what is called a basic direction. So, basic direction is what is going to be we are at a basic feasible solution it will take you to another basic feasible solution where now notice here. So, here x 1 x 2 is non basic x 3 x 4 are basic so, here x 1 and x 4 are basic x 3 and x 2 are non basic. So, the basic and non basic differ by only 1 so that that is that is what we want right. So, so, that is that is how we are going to. So, what I will do is we will do this few calculations and then I will look at an example or or let us uh, yeah. So, I think we will just uh, so, here is the first question that we will ask. How do basic variables change when we move along a basic direction from our basic right. So, again we have specified how non basic variables change when we move along a, a basic direction. Non basic variables change in a very specific I mean we have decided how they are going to do we say that the, the j x j we are going to increase all others we are going to maintain at 0. Now, the question is if we are going to move along that if we are, if we want that right what is the direction along which we should move that is that is that is the question that we want to ask and again it is it is going to be uh, fairly uh, a straightforward calculation. So, we have this direction d. So, what we did we are going to do the same thing we are going to uh, sort of partition it into basic components and non basic components. So, I can write D as D B and D N. So, these are for basic variables and these are for non basic variables. And now what have we decided? We have decided how D N looks like right. So, we have decided that d n is something like something like this where this is the j non basic variable. Now, again we do not know what d b is, but now we will soon see how uh, d b is going to come. Now, one requirement is that you know if I move I must remain feasible right. So, a d must be equal to 0. So, if we substitute that what happens? Is equal to 0. So, this means that right, this is just a straightforward calculation ok. This is just a straightforward calculation and now we can simplify it a little bit yes. No, no. So, we, we, we have not changed we are at one particular we have not reached here right we are here we are just sort of trying to see what is the direction in which to move right. So, 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 so we will once we hit there we, we will change it right. So, that is that is. So, we still are trying to describe one iteration of the simplex algorithm ok. So, so we are at this particular basic feasible solution only we want to move in the direction. So, a d must be 0. 
So, then we sort of substitute all this and then we get this. And now, what is this d n? d n has one component equal to uh, 1, others are 0, right. And now, what is this going to be? So, if I substitute that, this is going to be nothing but minus p inverse j, which is the, which is the uh, variable p r increasing, right. So, the variable we are increasing is, is, is the jth variable. So, if we decide to increase the jth variable, then the basic variables are changing like this, right. That is, this is the only way the basic variables uh, can change, ok. And now, what we will do is we will also bring in the objective value. Now, our main object, uh, our main thing is uh, what is the objective value. So, So, what is the change in objective? Along the direction d. Again, all we have to do is to simply calculate. So, what is C transpose d? So, I am just going to you know rewrite this as C b transpose d b plus C n transpose C n. So, C b are the objective coefficients corresponding to the basic variables, C n are the objective coefficients corresponding to the non basic variables, right. So, the objective is going to be this is how we are going to split the, the cost and now all we have to do is we have to just substitute this entire thing. So, let us just, just, just let us just calculate what, what, what is going to be. So, I know what is db. So, I will just substitute that that is minus b inverse a j. So, this is nothing but minus c b transpose b inverse a j plus what is d n? d n is just 1 and the jth, jth uh, uh, variable and, and 0 otherwise. So, it is just going to be So, I can rewrite this as C g minus B transpose B inverse H. ok. So, this is the change in objective value if I move from my current basic feasible solution x to x plus d. This is how the objective value changes. Now, this has a name, yes. So, I am just saying that the jth variable is, 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 is what we are planning to bring in, right. Because it could be, you know, so this does not have to be, you know, 1 through n. So, I am, I am, it is just permutation. So, I could do that, but then the notation would just get a little bit more complicated. So, what I am hoping is, you know, first I will, I will, I will give you the idea, then when we take a numerical example, all, all that, all that would be a little bit easier. So, so what it says is, if I move a unit distance along the direction d from my, my, my current basic feasible solution, this is how objective value is going to change, right. So, this is, uh, we will see that this is, whatever I mean, this, this, this is important. This is very important, this term is what also what is called the reduced cost of the variable x j. Reduce cost because it is the cost of x j c j minus something. So, that is why it is called reduced cost. It is going to be a very important uh, object. Uh, again, for those of you who have studied simplex algorithm or, or, or run you know simplex tableaus etcetera the numbers at the, at the at the top row or the bottom row however you write it uh, are are these reduced costs and we will also see that they have they are they sort of are implementing dual constraints now remember the dual constraints are 
y transpose a less than or equal to c right. So, what we will see eventually uh, is that so the, these guys are going to be my dual solution y. So, what we have is y transpose a. So, we have c minus y transpose a. So, that is exactly why when we say that the reduced costs are greater than or equal to 0 we have optimality right because of, of this dual feasibility all right okay. So, so that is one thing. Uh, the next thing that we have to talk about is how much uh, to move along this direction. So, here we see that you know uh, we we can only go up till the blue point we cannot go any further. So, how much do we move along this direction d that is a question and we will we'll do the calculation in the next class I will tell you how, what we are going to do. So, now let us look at this here right. So, if you look at this here x 2 is being maintained at 0. So, x 2 is, is, is ok. I am increasing x 1. So, that is also fine right. I do not know about x 4 and x 3. So, I, I, I am going to stop when I hit uh, this point when x 3 becomes 0. So, so that is what the, the, the how much I can travel uh, is going to be. So, so what we are going to say is that we can travel keep travelling along this direction d as long as one of the basic variables becomes 0. So, so that is that is what we think and that that is going to give you some nice uh, condition and, and that is exactly what you again you do in simplex algorithm. So, so you compare do some some sort of ratio test or something like that to determine which is the variable that leaves the basis it is exactly that, right. So, so all these things whatever you know some of you have are familiar with simplex tableaus whatever you have been implemented the, the very sort of solid reasoning as to uh, why we are we are doing it. So, we what we will do in the next class is we will see that and we will also start uh, looking at a numerical example of, of a couple of iterations of a simple LP uh, using the simplex algorithm. So, so that will give you a, a, a solidify uh, whatever we have talked about. Alright, so with this uh, let us uh, stop for today, we will uh, meet again on Monday.